the uh, we're 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 in we're in the realm of the of a Byzantine world. Okay, like people have to situate themselves in not the world as it appears, but the world as it is. There's mm-hmm. a difference on the appearance of things, which is not very important if you believe in truth. It would seem as though we live in democracies here in the transatlantic community where we represent Western liberal values expressed in NATO and, you know, globalization and that's, and we have democracies. And then you have the, the tyrannical uh, systems of the East, especially of China, but also of Russia that are authoritarian personalities. Uh, and, uh, and that's, that's antagonistic to Western values. Now, the reality, especially if anybody's listened to this whole conversation we've had or have, have watched your previous interviews with, with other individuals, uh, they're aware that we do, that's an illusion. The reality is that we do not have democracies. We have some residues from democratic mechanisms that were fought for in the past, but we live under a very, very tightly controlled Five Eyes Bank of England run uh, oligarchy. These are the, the physical, you know, aspects of the real power structure of the oligarchy. And unlike what we've been taught in our popular history books that, um, you know, the British empire disappeared after World War II, and then you, now we had the American empire. That is not true. What the hell killed Kennedy? What was Kennedy fighting to stop in the, in the United States? What killed his brother, Robert? What was, what was his brother, Robert, trying to extricate from the United States? And what was he trying to do by restoring a certain foreign policy of development, of helping nations stand on their own two feet in South America and Africa? That's what both Kennedy brothers were doing. What was Roosevelt doing? Why was his plans for a U.S.-China-Russia alliance of global development projects, why was that sabotaged with his early death? And why did the Wall Street power structure, which came in and flooded and created the CIA, disbanded the OSS, purged the U.S. of all of its patriots, what was it representing? Was that, was that the real America that became the American empire? Or is there something that was killing these different presidents going back? There's been eight presidents who died in office from only 17. I mean, the first one died in office. It was Harrison in 1840. What was Harrison doing? Right. What was, what was Lincoln doing? What was Garfield doing? What was McKinley doing? What was Harding, Harding doing? What was JFK doing? What was FDR mm. doing? They were all doing the same thing. If you look at the policies and you look at the ideas that they were fighting for, it's a continuity, just like we've been de- dealing with this continuity so far. Um, <clears throat> so it's not the case that the U.S. The, the U.S. became the empire. It's that this thing inside of the U.S. that was always there since 1776, there was something that never left the USA mm. in 1776. Some, it, just some- managed, it just managed to, to gain supremacy. It was always... It was always there. It was always kind of trying to get influence. Yeah, you 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 realize when you read this. Um, when you read, uh, I, 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 G. Edward Griffin was on, um, mm-hmm. and his book Creature of Jekyll Island, and yeah. it starts with the foundation of the Federal Reserve in 1913. But what you realize when when reading the book is, yeah, I mean, there's a to and f- there's a toing and froing, and there's a back and forth, and there's a there's a there's a tug of war going right from the beginning. People trying to implement central banking and fiat currency and, and the rest of it. Well, look at, so, yeah, look, yeah. Look at like Aaron Burr, right? Like the Aaron Burr was the guy who uh, created Wall Street, like the Bank of Manhattan, which was the foundation for Wall Street, was created by Aaron Burr, the vice president, who basically laundered money from the government to create a speculative enterprise that should have gone into building waterworks and water infrastructure. He instead used that to create a bank that was based on speculation instead of national improvements. And after killing Hamilton and being caught red-handed at the heart of a conspiracy to break up the, the U.S. into a northern and southern confederacy in 1804, and then he tried to do it again in, uh, with a western confederacy that he was supposed to become king of, he was found at the heart of this conspiracy in, again, 1807. There was a, a warrant on his arrest. To avoid arrest, what does Aaron Burr do? The guy who's, who creates Wall Street? He runs off to British Canada where he... His, his nephew is now the governor general of Canada um, and he gets a, a ship under, in disguise to go off to London where he lives for five years in Jeremy Bentham's house doing all sorts of sordid orgiastic stuff with Bentham, the nasty, you know, hedonistic calculus guy. Yeah. We talked about in defense of pederasty. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Before he's then sent back into the United States during the, uh, at the beginning of the, uh, the War of 1812 in order to run a new type of operation now that people have forgotten what he did somehow, um, which involves recreating a new deep state inside of the United States, which 
runs assassinations of, of pretty much it grows as a parasite within, um, which tries to break up the United States in, in 1860, 61. Um, and luckily you had some creative moral people who sacrificed to stop that from it did. But point being is, yeah, you've got, you don't just have one America. You've got two Americas at war with itself. And one of them is a British controlled operation from within that never gave up its loyalty to the, uh, the higher hereditary powers of the elite. Mm. So this is the thing today that people have to recognize is this is a dominant force. Donald Trump, I think did legitimately try as a non-establishment figure to push against that. I think he meant it. I don't, I think he made a lot of mistakes along the way, but nonetheless, that was the last real resistance I think was there since, since maybe Bobby Kennedy died. Um, And that's what's running that, that species character is what's running the NATO Western neoliberal system. That's trying to get us all to become convinced that the real enemy is not that, Mm. that thing that ran a color revolution inside of the United States. Yeah. They're trying to say, no, it's all Russia or it's all China. And there's a variety of narratives that have been created that are Mm. absorbing people on the left as well as on the right into both uh, theories, which are, are, they ignore the reality that, yes, China has problems. Yes, Russia has problems. Well, I think that's the thing people can, people, you can get kind of simplistic in in your thinking and that you kind of go, oh, we're bad. And then people go, people then kind of, jump and go oh well then that must mean china and russia are these heroes and then you find out they're not you know there's always there's always a bit of nuance right and so there's nuance yeah yeah I there's mean, always the, nuance the, so the they thing, the, yeah. the thing to keep in mind is that the, the the driving force of this evil is the thing that that has wanted to both destroy the united states as well as destroy russia and destroy china for the past 150 200 plus years mm. it's the same thing that wants to destroy all of these things and um like for example they were able to nation strip the United States. As I, as I mentioned, we talked about earlier with the creation of the consumer society outsourcing of industry. They wanted to do the same thing in the 1980s with China, right? They had their George Soros, Gorbachev of China as the, uh, the secretary general of the CP, CCP, uh, Zhao Jiang. Zhao yeah. Jiang was the guy that he ran a think tank in China with George Soros in the 1980s. He mm. brought in Milton Friedman. He brought in... Uh, he wanted to bring in shock therapy the way Gorbachev was doing as a traitor to Russia with Yeltsin in, uh, in Russia. The thing is, r- the Russians at the time didn't have the ability to recognize what was going on until it was too late. And the 1990s was a rape, which Russia is still recovering from. Thank God that Putin was able to sort of start bringing in a real nationalism in that sense yeah. to begin to, to recover. Whereas China was wise enough, especially after uh, Zhao Jiang was discovered to be at the heart of a, of a CIA-run operation to uh, create Tiananmen Square. And they didn't tolerate him anymore. They ousted him as, pre- as, as general secretary of the CCP. They uh, put him in permanent exile of house arrest till, he, to, till the day he died. George Soros was illegalized. He was banned from China. They shut down all of the Soros operations, the brainwashing of young Chinese economists into Milton Friedman thinking they, they, they banished them. They all came to the, to New York and Canada where they set up operations like e- epoch times and other yeah. things are currently being used to brainwash the Westerners mm. uh, under a new enemy image. They're still there. They, I mean, the British are the ones that are, have been trying very hard since that time to, to force China to have a private central bank. China is the only country that rejected Zhao Ziyang's desire to privatize their central bank the way Russia had done. And that um, still remains to this day. So, to this that, day. so, so the, the Steve Bannon take on like CCP and whatnot, that's, is that, that's look, a bit simplistic. Steve as well. Bannon is, look, to understand Steve Bannon as a, as a, as a counterintelligence operation, you got to look at his role in the uh, Dignitas uh, Humanitae Institute, um, which is a Habsburg, an auto, an auto Habsburg founded uh, think tank in uh, uh, Italy, which, uh, is a major black nobility controlled think tank. You could just look at the people who are the patrons of this. Um, Steve Bannon is the nominal head of this thing. He was brought in to revive um, a certain school of fascism um, in Europe to create a new collect the unite the right against uh, Islam and against Confucianism. So it's a, it's a new repackaging of a clash of civilizations dogma, Mm -hmm. which people rejected under the neocons because it became pretty obvious in how ugly it was but he's repackaging it for conspiracy theorists 
um, as well as people who just generally reject the neo the neoliberal ethic, which is evil, of just there are no there are no truths, right? It's all just accept everything. Yeah. So people reject that because they're they're healthy human beings, but then they're absorbed into this new umbrella organization. So there's things like that. There's things like Falun Gong, which is again another intelligence operation as a synthetic controlled sort of Scientology of Asia. With which tried to run a certain type of a color revolution in the 1990s, which was expelled, and justifiably so, um, in 97 or 98 in China. And Falun Gong is run by a guy who believes that he's the messiah who's communicating with aliens, kind of mm -hmm. like L. Ron Hubbard, yeah. um, giving people special powers to heal themselves with no, you know, no medicine. And this is used on the surface to be like a meditation group of, of like Qigong, but not really. There's something more nefarious that is controlling it that most of the members are not even aware of that's being used to fund things like Epoch Times, fund a lot of the, I mean, there's a whole international web yeah. of these operations that are, that have deployable narratives to misdirect people into realizing that it's not George Soros or it's not British intelligence at the heart of the election scam in the US that ran a uh, color revolution. They'll say it's China because some of the hardware can be traced to China. Yeah. Or they'll say it's not the 200 US bioweapons labs scattered around the world that have anything to do with COVID that was already packaged out in the 2010 Rockefeller Foundation lockstep scenario game. They'll say, don't look at any of that. It's China because of this one piece of evidence of some gain of function research mm. of $600,000 tied to the Wuhan lab. They'll say this receipt from Fauci and don't get me wrong. I love to make fun of Fauci. I think the guy's an asshole, but they're, but they're, they're, he's also expendable. He's disposable when he's not useful. And when they have a higher prize, like, for example, blame China for everything, mm -hmm. then he's, they will get rid of, they will throw Fauci to the Jacobin mobs to get his head cut off if it's more expedient. Yeah. Um, so that's what you have right now. But mm -hmm. the reality is when you look at what China and Russia together are doing with the Belt and Road Initiative, the Polar Silk Road, which is the Arctic expression of the Belt and Road, is they've created a completely alternative financial, political, economic security architecture that also involves increasingly Iran, 135 nations. A lot of them are in Africa, 17 in South America and the Caribbeans have signed on to the Belt and Road framework. It's funded by national banking institutions. It's not controlled by the IMF and World Bank. And it's doing things that empires don't do. So I'm not a fan of social credit, okay? Yeah, Soros likes when when Soros or Tony Blair or Kissinger say nice things about China. What they mean to say is we like those things that involve centralized social control that we can use. Yeah. They like yeah. that part. They don't like everything that China is actually doing as far as encouraging population growth, yeah. uh, development of full spectrum industrial economies in Africa, the training of labor forces to develop real skill sets in Nigeria and Congo. They hate that. That's that's illegal in any empire. So they're mind. building these. They're building these countries up to be independent. Yeah, you could just look at these wonderful videos going through, and just I mean, just talk to people who who live there. Um, they're actually seeing hope for the first time. Of they're seeing like real development happening mm -hmm. in front of their eyes, and it's only when you read our like Western controlled like propaganda outlets that you start getting a different narrative, saying that they're they're doing debt trap diplomacy or yeah. No, they, no, they're really, they're really not at all. It's provably the case that they're not doing that. We've been doing that. Yeah. <laughs> the past like hundred plus years, we've been already doing that. 